Welcome to the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular, featuring live plays, contests, and the Dice Tower Awards. We'd like to thank our sponsors and our special guests, and we hope that you enjoy. And welcome to both Board Game Breakfast and the beginning of the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular. We're glad to have you with us today. So we have a lot of stuff planned for the next four days. So today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday from around 9 a.m. till 5, 6, 7 p.m. each day. We have live videos, some pre-recorded stuff for you. But it's going to be pretty much consistent content all day long. And of course, since it's YouTube, you'll be able to continue to watch it afterwards if you'd like to. But I would recommend watching it live because there's going to be many contests for games and for gift certificates from Game Nerds. Speaking of contests, we're going to start with one right now here. So our first contest is for three copies of Wild Space, which you can see behind me. Pandasaurus is reprinting Wild Space here. And if you want to win one of these copies, this, this contest is for USA only. Although, stay tuned, many of our contests will be worldwide. But this one's USA only. And to, email, to enter this contest, email us at contest at dicetower.com. In the subject line, put the word wild. And then answer the questions, how many spaceships does each player receive in Wild Space? How many spaceships does each player get? I don't even know the answer to that question. I probably should, um, but you can go find it online. Check out Pandasaurus's website. Go look it up on Board Game Geek. Find out, and you can win one of these three copies. All right, so we have a lot of different things we're going to talk about, and I need to I need to move along here. But before we jump into our first contributors, I do want to tell you about an upcoming thing: Dice Tower West. Dice Tower West. The dates of that are March 2nd to March 6, 2022. We're fully expecting this to be the first big, fun, full-time gaming con in, in 2022. But we're back, and it's going to be exciting. Tickets are going on sale September 7th. August 1st, we're going to have a full announcement video because we have a brand new venue, which, in fact, next week, I'm going to Vegas. And if you're in Vegas, uh, maybe I can meet up with you. I'm going to be at the Meepleville uh, Cafe there and stuff. But I'm going to go there. I'm going to be filming and, uh, you know, the new areas and stuff. And I'm going to show them off to you on August 1st here on the channel. But I'm telling you, it is going to be bigger than it's ever been before. There's going to be cons within a con. we got historical con, prototype con, more food options, Dungeons and Dragons for people like that. Uh, a, a new Dice Star West is a new, big, big, brand new library, which I am working hard at constantly adding games to that. There's going to be 24-hour gaming, a play-to-win section. We're looking for people to help get involved with this. There's, I have so much information here. Cheap rooms. So I'm excited about all this stuff, and we're going to tell you the full announcements for that on August 1st. You want to know something? I'll tell you why your life has changed. Diganis. I wanted to stick around. But then those pesky Persians. Huh? Ah, way. Then these guys came around. And you know what they gave you? They changed your life. They gave you toilets. And then? And then there was unrest. They just wanted to rest. But now there was the unrest. So these guys. Well, they had to fight these guys. About the savages. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why is he doing this? I'll tell you why. I'm leading up to something that changed your life! And then, those savages, they became civil. And then they fought against these guys! For the queen! And country! And what 
that we do? Well, we take your life! Well, there was other people. It was the French, the Portuguese, the Spanish. They, they, they just were a little whatever. But one of these people really didn't like for queen and country. He Kaiser Oberleutnant Kaiser! They even took the old Roman Caesar, which is not really Caesar, it's Kaiser. And he called himself Kaiser! The Gaul! No, the Gaul were beaten by the English. Or so they say. Because these are the Gauls! But Paul, what about the worst time in history? Ah, son, some things are better left unsaid. Wrong! You gotta learn these things so we don't repeat it. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the worst time in history. This epitomizes evil. It's still in our history. And this week, these guys launched Operation Barbarossa to attack Russia, their allies. So they stabbed them in the back. Well, how many men? Well, I'd say about three million Germans. And whoa! The logistics just on that. You got to get the horses, the tanks, the gas. But they were going to take over Russia, and Russia had enough gas. So they thought. <laughs> well, we're going to go through history. Week by week, battle by battle. Stick around. Do 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 ready to film do 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 I don't think she's coming. In fact I know she's not. She's gone on holiday. Left me on my own. Funnily enough, that's what we're talking about. I'm Tim from Two Player Not to Play, this would be Lizzie. We're talking about games that you can take away on holiday. Should have taken this one. <laughs> Odin's Ravens. This is a two-player head-to-head game, very simple, very quick. Lay out a path, which is a set of cards that you have to move your raven up one side, down the other. Quickest to the end wins. Basically, you have a deck of cards in your hand, and they kind of match the path, and you're trying to lay down so that you can move along that path, cards that equal the path that you've got to take. And then you've got another little set of cards that are called Loki cards, which are special powers that enable you to switch cards around or add cards to the other player's path to make it a little bit longer, take cards out of your path, things like that. So it's just basically manipulation of the cards the best way that you can to get to the end of the track as quick as you can, fastest player wins. Simple, really nice, easy little game. Pack of cards. You can literally take the pack as if it's a, a book or they're two little sets of sort of tarot sized cards that you pack away in your tin, bang it in your luggage, off you go, have a great time. I'll just, uh, I'll just play a solo game then. Hmm. Well thanks for watching. Here I am uh, uh, talking to myself. All right, everybody. Uh, so one thing here uh, that the Dice Tower is, is we are a video show. But we also, and one of the ways we started out was being a podcast. In fact, the my podcast host, Eric Summer, known as The Voice. Uh, well, until we got Chris. It's, we're gonna, maybe we'll have a voice off between them. Eric is here, along with Blake and Jenny, friends of the Dice Tower, reviewers for us. So we're, we're going to be playing games together. But... The Dice Tower podcast, if you don't listen to it, goes up each Tuesday. In fact, one went up this morning. I believe Manny and Suzanne's show went up today. And each week, you can po listen to that. But we have a whole pile of podcasts in the Dice Tower Network, which is a loose association of different podcasts. And so we're adding three podcasts to the Dice Tower Network. And so each of these podcasts has made a video that they're gonna show off here and just introduce themselves to you. You can find out more information about each of them on DiceTowerNetwork.com or on their website. So we're gonna start first of all with the Innkeeper's Table. Welcome to the Inn, Dice Tower viewers. We are the Innkeeper's Table. I'm Bill. And I'm Dylan. And we're both really excited to be part of the Dice Tower Network. 
Our show, The Innkeeper's Table, is a bite-sized podcast, typically between 15, 20 minutes long per episode. And each episode, what we do is we focus in on a specific board game-related topic. Yeah, so if you want to come check us out, uh, we've got episodes that drop every Friday morning. And like Bill said, we cover a wide range of topics. One that we like to do on a regular basis is we make game recommendations in the form of, you know, if you liked X, we think you should check out Y. Other episodes will hone in on a specific game mechanic where, and we'll basically just analyze it to death. We'll talk about what works for it, how it evolved, and where it fits into certain games. Other episodes, we will focus on a specific game and we will talk about what we enjoyed about it, how it works. Yeah, and sometimes it's just a, a grab bag where we pick up you know, a topic that's related to board gaming and chat about it for 15 minutes. So that's, that's us. Uh, once again, we want to give a huge thank you to the Dice Tower for welcoming us into their network. We are so, so happy to be here. Yeah, so if you're interested in a bite-sized show that really is for anybody who wants to learn more about board games, then come check us out. We'll save you a seat at the Innkeeper's Table. Enjoy the summer spectacular, everyone. Bye, guys. So that's the innkeeper's table, Bill and Dylan. They have 62 episodes, or at least when I looked a couple days ago. Uh, one of the episodes, if you've ever been super confused about math trades, they talk about that. Uh, math trades, I participated in, are incredibly confusing, but they kind of break it down. So that's kind of a cool thing, so check them out. So that's the first podcast joining us, and we like to welcome them. Secondly, we have the Solo BG Podcast, or Solo Board Gaming Podcast. Hey, hello everyone, this is Derek, and I'm very excited to finally be here on the Dice Tower, and I'm super happy that now Solo BG Podcast gets to be a part of the Dice Tower Network. And let me tell you, Solo BG Podcast is a weekly podcast that we do, and we focus in solo and cooperative board games. And once in a while, we bring amazing guests, such as publishers, designers, uh, content creators, so there you go. You got it. You can uh, stream the podcast in Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Pandora, anywhere podcasts can be found. You name it. So I wait for you there. Once again, it's a weekly podcast for solo and cooperative board games with interviews. And sometimes, once in a while, we do our episodes of solo with friends, which basically we talk about a non-solo game. So I wait for you there and I'm very happy to be here on the Dice Tower Network. Solo gaming is becoming a thing, that's what I've heard. In fact, I just played a solo game the other day. I'll be reviewing it in a few weeks. 97 episodes of the Solo Board Gaming Podcast are up. Uh, lots of different interviews. Also, he does magic. How many people who do magic are part of the Dice Tower at this point? There is a lot of them. So welcome, and finally, something near and dear to my heart, mixing gaming and education, the Game Schoolers. We're the Game Schooler Podcast. I'm Doug Kotecki. And I'm Michael McCabe. And we are super excited to be joining the Dice Tower Network. Maybe a little too excited. <laughs> game Schooler is all about the thought that every game is educational, regardless of whether it's an educational game. Every week we have a recommended game of the week. It's a game that most of you are probably familiar with, and we go through and we break down how skills can be taught and used in a school environment with that game. We also have the School of Gaming where we talk about gaming terms and etiquette and different different educational things that pop up from time to time. And we also finish every episode with a high five challenge where we take a high five list of family friendly games that you can think about adding to your collection uh, if you so chose. Doug's a real gamer. He's been in the field for over a decade. I mean, he paints minis and does all those things that gamers do, and I'm an educator. Yeah, he's a real doctor. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so we're excited to be a part of the Dice Tower Network. We really look forward to getting together. And if you have ever thought about using board games in an educational setting, this is the podcast for you. All right, I got 27 episodes up, and again... This is a big deal to me, and I really like the, the cross-cut they have there. We're a gamer and an educator. As a former educator, as a former teacher, this is a big deal, and I'm excited to see this sort of thing, uh, game schoolers. So those three podcasts, you can find about them and all our other podcasts. We have a ton that are part of the Dice Tower Network. Go check them out. All righty. Well, what else we got for you today, folks? Well, something I'm excited about. 
In 2020, we ran a Kickstarter. I know, I know, we also ran one in 2021. But in 2020, we, one of our... We have a contributor That's right. Never mind, folks. Before we do a talk about this anymore, let's do some more contributors. Then I'll continue what I was just saying. Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Today, I want to recommend the game Sheepy Time. Not Sleepy Time, the thing we all love, but Sheepy Time, the thing a conspiracy theorist would say. You think the Earth is round because you're a sheep. You and all those scientists just having your sheepy time. In this game, you were playing as the dream sheep trying to help people go to sleep. Um, and I do think, unfortunately, there is one major design flaw of the game. Um, I sleep in the fetal position, and it's very hard to play this game in the fetal position. I mean, look, right? If I'm, if I'm like this, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm tucking in. I'm tucking in, right? And now, where do I put the game? You know, my body is using up all of the table space, and I don't know how to set. It's just, it's very hard to play in the fetal position. In sheepy time, you will be playing cards to race around the board. If you land on a spot that has your color token on it, you can use the special ability on that spot. Watch out, the deck is full of cards from nightmares. Oh, da da da. If the nightmare catches your sheep, you will become scared. If you get caught by the nightmare twice, you will wake up and be out of the round. This is a great introduction to racing games. I could see families with kids 10 and up being very into this game. I did play it at two players, and I won't do that again, okay? Two players just doesn't have enough tension. There's not enough going on. I thought it was going to actually put me to sleep. But then I played it at three and four player games, and I was like, oh, there's the tension. Welcome. You're the guest of honor. Hi, I'm Jordan. This is Weeknight Gaming, where I talk about a game that works well to play on a weeknight. So here we have Noctiluca. This is a game from Shem Phillips, who does the uh, West Kingdom and the North Sea games. This is nothing like those games, of course. This is a, uh, a kind of an abstract game. You are, I don't know, something about jellyfish, colorful, light up jellyfish. I don't know what, what Noctiluca are, even after playing the game. They're like these things that float around water, apparently, and they're bright and colorful. So you're going to have this board in the middle of the table. It's going to have a hex pattern to it, and you're going to be, uh, it's going to, you're going to fill it with dice that are all different colors of dice, and you're going to then place pieces around the edges of the board, and depending on where you place it, you're going to go straight across and take all of the dice of one number that's on the pips, and you take all the dice of different colors that match, and then you're going to put them on these cards, and you're trying to fulfill kind of orders or contracts with that. But if you have any dice left over, you have to pass them to your neighbor. So you don't want to take too many dice. It's not always the most dice is the best move. So you want to be strategic in how you're taking those dice because you don't want to help your opponents, but you also don't want to like miss out on something. It's really cool. This is, uh, it's really good for a weeknight. It has pretty low rules overhead, super pretty. Um, all the colorful dice are a lot of fun. The production is really nice. So it's like a, a fun game to kind of pull out and look at. And it, you know, it, you know, it just plays well. It's kind of a, a thinky kind of puzzly game, but not one that's going to be, you know, super brain burning. It's kind of satisfying in that way, where it's not going to like hurt your head to think about it, but you're, you know, you're still stretching a little bit, I guess. So that's Noctiluca. I really love it. This is one of our favorite games at my house, and it's great. That's it. I'm Jordan. Thanks. All right, as I was saying. <laughs> All right, so in 2019, we had a Kickstarter. and Or 2020, we had a Kickstarter. I'm going back too far now. And one of our stretch goals for the Kickstarter was that we were going to redo the Dice Tower website. Now, we got some flack that it was not done immediately. But here's the thing. Getting a website done requires two things. One is money. They're not cheap to get a website done. And the other is time. It is a lot of work and effort to put into um, a website just from basic concepts and goals and stuff. 
Well, the Dice Tower website is now in the advanced concept stage. It is not even remotely close to being finished. But there's enough done that we can show you what it's going to look like. I'm really excited about this. So I did an interview with the, the, the person who's running the overview, Hilmar, the Drupal Viking, uh, putting our new website together. Uh, and I recorded the interview, and he's going to show us the website. Now, again, be in mind that this is all very preliminary stuff. If you go, oh, I don't like the way that graphic looked or whatever, that stuff's going to change. But I want to give you a, an idea of the concepts that we're trying to fit with the new Dice Tower website. So here's that interview. Take a look. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to do something special here on Board Game Breakfast. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome to the show uh, Hilmar. Hilmar, why don't you introduce yourself to folks and tell us how, tell people how we met. Hi. Yes, my name is Hilmar. I, uh, I am the CEO and CTO of the company Um Av Gera, a website company in Iceland. Uh, we normally do uh, websites with uh, Drupal and WordPress. And uh, I met Tom, what, three years ago at the Midgard Convention in Reykjavik, Iceland. Yes. Um, I actually, um, we, we, uh, we, I approached him and I told him, hey, so I am a Drupal developer and I noticed that your old website is in Drupal. How about if we maybe uh, spike it up a little bit and, and make it a little bit more uh, modern? And uh, so we went back and forth and we've been uh, talking about it and uh, designing and throwing ideas back and forth and uh, for quite a while, actually. Right. This has been worked on behind the scenes here, folks. This is um, something this was a stretch goal from our 2020 websites take more work than I think a lot of people realize. But we're getting into the stretch of we have the concepts and basic some of the basic framework behind the scenes. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you, or well, Hilmar is going to show us, um, what the website, the ideas behind it. Realize that the graphics and everything else is going to be changed. Um, so uh, let's pull it up here and look at it. You can see this here. So it just tells what we're looking at. But folks, again, realize there's a lot of, we're looking at the structure, not necessarily the graphics. Right. And I, and I, maybe a little bit a little bit about the graphic as well, but you know everything is due to change, of course. Uh, so what we are looking at right now is the front page. What we wanted to uh, do was to declutter the front page a little bit, uh, just showing you what things are important to see on the on the front page. So one of the first things that you want to see is the brand new reviews that the Dice Tower does, because the Dice Tower is very much. Uh, a lot of reviewing. Um, so we have the we have the reviews, three uh, brand new reviews on the front page. You can see right away who is reviewing. Uh, with even uh, even if it's the four squares, we have Chris Yee and uh, Mike Delicio, Tom and C here. We also have another uh, video with just C and another one with Jason Perez. And of course, more reviews can be seen by pressing. The button. We also need to have advertisement space, so we have uh, a space between to put advertisement wherever we want. The, one of the cool features is that we can remove them, we can move them around, we can do whatever. So we are not fixed. It's not a fixed position. We can always drag and drop and pull it up or down depending on um, where. Uh, uh, you know, what day it is and, and what is the most important thing to display on the front page and other pages. Maybe uh, just just to give other people heads up, we are also showing Tom this for the first time. So it's a <laughs> world, world preview. <laughs> uh, beneath that, uh, we want to uh, highlight the podcasts a little bit so that we you can also find other material than just uh, the videos. Um, and uh, for the news, we wanted to be able to display the news in a way that you could actually read a little bit about what's going on. Uh, but very th that we are trying to distinct very much how how you see uh, data and information on the site, so that it's very clear that uh, pressing read more here has to do with the blue-orange games on the horizon news article 
and not anything else. And so we wanted to, to emphasize that uh, quite a lot. More news will, of course, just give us um, an overview of all the news that, uh, that can be found on the website. We should make a side, uh, a side mention here that all this stuff will be able to be easily read on mobile devices. Of, yes, that's, that's uh, one, one of the things that we did uh, very much from the beginning. Our graphical designer is actually mobile first designer. So he always thinks about how things can be displayed on mobile, and then he expands it to the uh, desktop versions and not the other way around. Because a uh, website like the Dice Tower must be very much seen on a mobile device, especially phones. So we are focusing very much on that. Uh, the footer is the same on all the pages we are showing you. We have a little bit of about, and uh, this is, of course, all uh, subject to change uh, because this is just text. And uh, then we have just the newest board game content. So here we could have a review and board game breakfast and uh, the uh, unboxing and, and all those uh, videos. We just, we just pull them here uh, for that. The next page we want to show you is how we think about looking at a, a review. This is a review, this is not the game, this is a review that we are taking a look at where the Dymo game was uh, reviewed. It was reviewed by the Four Squares, so we will have the highest rating and all the other ratings here. It, it got the seal of an approval because the highest rating is seven, and. According to Tom, that is always the highest rating that will give the seals. Yes. Um, and uh, but we can also see all the reviews of this game connected to this page. So that if Tom would do, uh, you know, a separate video or Jason Perez or, or anyone would do a separate review video, we will also see it as connected to the review you're looking at. So if you would click here to see the review from Tom or Jason Press, you know, uh, then you would see here in other reviews, you would actually see the Four Squares review there. And also, uh, we want to uh, give a little bit of information about the, uh, the game itself that we are looking at. Uh, below that, and we, could, uh, we want to display uh, playthroughs and how to play uh, videos if they are available for this game. These uh, thumbnails are, of course, uh, not connected to this game, but this is how they might be displayed. Just ask YouTube videos where you could see uh, other content. And, and we are separating them as playthroughs and how to play uh, from unboxing previews and other MISC videos because they are just not the same. We want to categorize them a little bit so it's easier for people to to actually um, find the videos that you really want to see. Uh, an overview of board game videos. This is just all the videos and just the list of all the videos that are on the Dice Tower uh, web, web page displayed in chronicle order from newest to the oldest. So uh, this is just an overview page to do that. Then you could see the latest reviews. You could search videos by title. And you could also find videos by your favorite contributor. So I could press Mike Delicio and I will only get videos that Mike Delicio has. Right, well, uh, let's not get crazy here, but. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then we can also get all series. And, and again, um, uh, our graphical designer is not as involved in board game as we are. So uh, there was a little bit of misunderstanding what exactly the captions are here. But basically, you could get all the series that um, and the, the logos for the series. Uh, so like top here. tens and uh, boring unboxings. Board, board yeah, and 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 pork and breakfast, and and all those series that you have. 
Uh, yeah, so that was this page, and and here we are in the video series. So here we would be looking at just curated all board game breakfast videos. And you could even see them by subcategory if you want, because some, some of the videos have subcategories, but that is subject to change. Uh, both me, Tom, and Rob Searing, we have been talking about that we need to curate the videos a little bit more uh, based on when we import all the data from the old sites. What about uh, top tens? Oh, man. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so top 10 lists. Uh, so this would be uh, a display of a top 10 games of 2019. So it's a top 10 list that you guys have already uh, decided on. This is not the overview page. So because it's a video, we will have the video here. If it was related to a podcast episode, we would have the podcast displayed here as well. So you could connect either one to it. And then we are looking at the top 10 lists like this. We will have the dice people on top and then all the games and be i am very specific with this uh all the uh, boxes are going to be the same size all the images are going to be the same size so it's not going to be mismatch as happens on the old site and also when we start scrolling and we go uh, actually past this part here this will become sticky so the top list actually slides under uh, your, the dice people so that you, when we are down here at seven or six, that we will still see, you know, your figures knowing which one is which. Okay, I like that. And, um, yeah, so this is, this is just very much the same thing. We are, and we are very, very much aware on that it's going to be hard to do this in mobile. So we are going to try different things. Maybe we would like to have slight scroll. We're going to try that. But um, that is one of the things that we will have to do a little bit of trial and error when we start coding the site itself. We do uh, expect that it can be up to five people, five different people. Uh, Sure. Persons that are that are that are displaying. So it might be, you know, like like you guys did for the top 100. You had four people plus people's choice. Right. And uh, actually, one one cool feature that I haven't mentioned to Tom, which is so easy to implement, that we could do um, a top 10 list, and he could invite uh, somebody from the from the community, you know, John Doe, and he would just have to check Mark that John Doe who, ha who did his top 10 list, and then it will display not as people's choice, but as John Doe in one of the lines of, of the display. So All right. you, you have, you have more, uh, well, there's, choices. there's two things here that I want to mention. One is at some point in the future, folks, we're going to do a full video of this and, Hilmar and I will maybe we'll stream live and let people ask questions about this um, because we don't have a whole lot more uh, time to show you today. But also this is being worked on. Our goal is to have it done by the end of the year, maybe, um, which mm -hmm. is half a year still. We have to work on this. But is there anything else you want to show us real quick? Ah. Yeah, really, really quick. This is just one board game. Uh, just just so that we, we can see. And here we can see all the people who have rated the board game. And uh, we have a landing page for designers, artists, and publishers, so you can actually find games by Corey Conicia or Jacob Frixelis or just whoever you want. And the Game of the Year page is probably uh, one of the coolest, where we have a very much a highlight of what's the Game of the Year and underneath the nominees. And just v very much distincting for, for people which is which. And finally, uh, this one, we are just showing how the menu will open up as a mega menu. Uh, 
so that um, it's not just a dull list of of text. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's what we are uh, suggesting right now. Yeah, I'm really excited about this, folks. I hope you're excited. We're going to try to make the website as functional and useful as we can. Like I said, we'll show more of it off in the future. But for now, let's keep moving. Thanks, Hilmar, for coming by. Thank you very much. All right, I guess I should straighten the hat. All right! That's the end of Board Game Breakfast, but it is not the end of this video. In fact, as soon as the Board Game Breakfast outro is there, stay tuned because we got our first um, a contributor segment on uh, top 10. I'll let you discover that on your own. And then in each video, you will be able to click next uh, down at the bottom in the description. We have a link to the next video because as soon as this video is over at 10 o'clock, we are jumping right to live play, the first live play. Z, Eric Summer, um, Blake, and Jenny are playing summer camp. So we'll see you then. Stay tuned though. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Arcane Wonders brings you Four Gardens, the newest game in the Dice Tower Essential line. Long ago, in a beautiful eastern kingdom, a queen and her people pleased their gods by building a mystical pagoda. The pagoda housed the four gods and towered strong over the magnificent kingdom. As time passed, the queen fell ill and she summoned her people to compete for her crown. The crown would be passed on to the person who could build the most pristine garden around the pagoda. The heir would be chosen by the four gods themselves. The game features unique gameplay, beautiful artwork, and a 3D pagoda. The goal of Four Gardens is to accumulate the most points by completing landscape cards and finishing sets. Each finished set creates a panoramic view of a garden. You can finish these panoramas by first laying groundwork cards, acquiring resources by turning the 3D pagoda, and allocating those resources to satisfy the requirements of each groundwork card. For more information, please visit us at arcanewonders.com. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. And this is The Family Showdown! Hello, Rebecca and Hunter here from The Family Showdown. And today we're going to talk about our top 10 games, rarely played, but we'll never call them. So, you ready to start this off? I'm ready to get it done. Because this is going to be story time, I think, for these. Because these are games that have personal meaning more so than rare out of print or hard to find or things like that. They're, they mean something to us. So I think this is going to be a fun list. Absolutely. Number 10. Our number 10 is Leaving Earth. This one in particular for me, um, I'm not a huge fan of math and this is like math the game however this is also pure active applied math in something that i've always been fascinated with with space and so when we go and do this to me it feels like i'm actually getting to do something i always thought was just really fascinating you get to play this game and help people launch rockets into space and send satellites you know orbiting around the earth go visit mars all of these different things and when I'm done, I always feel like I need to go and go read up and see what NASA's up to and everything else. I just, it just gets me all psyched up for space and astronomy. And I just absolutely love this game. And leaving Earth just leaves such a great feeling playing it. Number nine. Our number nine is a choir. This is kind of a personal choice because I used to play this with relatives back in the day. 
I have the, the fancy dancy 1999 Avalon Hill version because that's the one we played and that's the one I have personal memories of. I enjoyed playing this around the table and it kind of sparked my love of economic games. Number eight. Our number eight is UGTech. <laughs> this game is crazy. And the first time we played it, we actually found it at a like little mini local board gaming convention. And it's probably a miracle we didn't get kicked out of the building when we played <laughs> this because we were playing in these teams, laughing and crying. This game's about beating people with inflatable clubs as you're trying to get them to build up a certain kind of sculpture with different colored blocks. No talking involved, just grunts, some gestures, and a whole lot of club smacking. Karungu! Uh, <laughs> a goo-goo! <laughs> a goo <laughs> A goo <laughs> Seven. So my number seven is Conquest of the Empire. This is a game I played when I was a young one, back in <laughs> back in high school, back in the dark ages of the 80s. <laughs> so I've been looking for this game for years and years, and I was at the Dice Tower auction at the, one of the Dice Tower cons, and I were, was walking along, and there was Richard Borg selling games. I'm like, hmm. So I checked checked out his games up the very top shelf. It was Conquest of the Empire. It wasn't the version I played which was the 1984 version. This was a 2005 version, but close enough, I guess. And I was looking, and he said, half price! And I, <laughs> and I opened it up, take a peek, and all he did was rip open a bag and look at a miniature to see what it looks like and read the rule book. So it was basically pristine, mint condition. So it's a memory for the purchase and a memory from my childhood. Number six. Our number six is Dominion. Now... This may not be your favorite game nowadays. Eh, you know, you, 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 you like, like it. it right. You like it. I love it. But <laughs> this was a game that kind of got launched us into playing board games together. Right. And um, mutual friend brought it over and we played it all together. And we're like, oh, this is really fun. And we kept playing it and playing it. Pretty soon it's like, there's more. There's more of this game. There's expansions. There's more different types of it. Next thing you know, Hunter's bought all these different types of Dominion games, and I'm like, yes, all of the games. And then for a really super awesome present, Hunter made this nice briefcase and organized it and laminated some little markers and everything. So I have a nice, big, organized, massive collection of Dominion to play. It's so beautiful. And even if he wanted to, I'm never letting him call it now. <laughs> After all the work I put into it. You're not going to? This is kind of a little story because the uh, this is like an art box that you should get from like Hobby Lobby and places like that, and they had this insert built for it. And for whatever reason, Hobby Lobby slightly shrunk their box where the insert wouldn't fix. So I actually had to like sand the inside of the box <laughs> and wear it down to be able to let the insert fit inside. A labor of love. It was a labor of love. <laughs> Number five. Our number five, even though most of the ones I'm doing are mine, and most of the ones you're doing are yours. That might They're just be a mutual. coincidence. It's Age of Empires Three: The Age of Discovery. So this one has a story too, like most yep. of ours. <laughs> so we were at that very same dice tower auction that I bought Conquest of the Empire from. That was a good auction. And as soon as we step in, the dice tower has their massive spread of games that they're for sale for basic games they've already reviewed and they're calling and start going to the library. Hundreds of games for sale, and they kind of had them grouped off by prices, but then they had the cool games in a section, and Jason Levine was the actual auctioneer for those <laughs> games. So if you wanted to buy a game, you had to go for Jason. So I saw Age of Empire, and I heard good things about it, and uh, I wanted it, and he's like, some crazy number, like $80 or $100, and because uh, it was out of print, that version was out of print, but it got re <laughs> reprinted, so that kind of was the old version. And I'm like, I don't know, and then Tom walked by and saw I was haggling with Jason, he's like, <laughs> 
He does stuff for us. Give it to him for nothing. <laughs> and Jason's like, $20. I said, okay, $20. <laughs> so I got the Vita old. It's much loved. Stacked. Have you ever watched the old Dice Tower video? So let's see how it plays. Uh, but Age of Empires 3, which is based on a popular computer game, it really doesn't have anything to do with that computer game. You'll see the big Tom game. used to have all the games in the background just kind of stacked, and <laughs> this one's all kind of mushed in and beat up. Because it was but, on the bottom. But, but it's, 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 it's a little, little piece of the dice tower that I own. So. Well, and not only that, but it's a really stinking fun game. We have yeah, a blast is. playing it, and I in particular love the chocolate boats. I call them chocolate boats because they're a chocolatey brown color. And they're almost a rubber texture. Yeah, they're fun to play with. And on top of that, they're like a wild. So when you're going for the set collection and stuff, the boats have led me to a couple of victories now because... People are usually like, ah, I'll let her get the boats or whatever. Pretty soon I've amassed like this matching empire. <laughs> it's fantastic. I love playing this game. Number four. Our number four <laughs> is also one with a really good story. And this game is Vampire Radar. So um, this goes way back to OX Texas tabletop convention, the first one. Mm -hmm. And we got to go, and this is one of our first conventions we've gone to. This too, was my recall. second convention, board game convention. Yeah. Your very first board yeah. game convention. And um, the wonderful librarian Wanda there had gotten Sam and Z to come and be like guest star appearances and do a bunch of stuff and activities and things for the convention. And we were excited because we'd been watching Dice Tower for a while. Because, again, like we say, we're fans first. We're, we're super nerds. And so we got to meet Sam and Z and to play a game with them. And the first game we played with Z was this little cute game that he brought with him called Vampire Radar. And it was spelled Raider, R-A-D-E-R. -E mm -hmm. It was real quirky because it was Japanese and they had some issues with the translating and right, stuff. In right. fact, um, so, so we played it. It was a lot of fun. It's a one versus all hidden movement. You're trying to track down the Dracula and stuff. And it's a, it's a really fun game. We played that with a, and a couple of other people that are con regulars right. there with us. Had a blast. Um, really loved the game and the experience and gotten to be good friends with Sam and Z since. It's been really neat. And on top of that, then for an anniversary present, I hunted down um, a friend, Julian, thank you again, by the way, um, in Japan, because it's the only place you can get these games. And he helped me purchase the game and mail it to me so that I could surprise Hunter with it. And I had to be all sneaky because the printer's in Hunter's office and the rule book is all in Japanese for this. So I had to print the rule book in English. I had to find it online and print it and hide it until I got the package and everything and put the rule book in there. And so we have the game with the English rules all printed in it. And we don't get to pull it out very often, but it is so much fun. And every time we pull it out, we just think of Z going, blah, blah, you know, just it's, it's pretty amusing. So it was a lot of fun. Number three. My number three. I'm just giving up this formality. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Except for our top two. They're, 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 they're very much the very, same. Very oh. much each other's yeah. games. And the top two is kind of crossover. So anyway, enough said about that. So my number three is Blood Bowl 2nd Edition. Oh, yeah. So this is the game. It came out in 1988. Um, I played this like crazy in college in the summer with my... my friends and brother we played tons of blood bowl so much blood bowl it was crazy it's one of my favorite games uh, all the time and when i left college for whatever reason in a moment of weakness i got rid of all my board games must have had a crazy every oh my every goodness. one of my board games and of course blood bowl second edition i gave that away as well and uh we did a video for our channel for family showdown we did a grail game uh, video and my number one grail game was Blood, Blood Bowl. Bowl Second Edition, and her parents <laughs> occasionally watch our videos, so they saw that, keyed in on it, and <laughs> or her Rebecca's father went out and purchased. Well, I guess it's both her father and mother went out and purchased <laughs> yeah, Blood Bowl it. Second Edition for a present for me, and so it's just got nostalgia on top of nostalgia on top of cherished memories <laughs> to greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts ever. Um, so this one it'll never go. We hardly we played it. My copy. This copy one was. time, and we haven't played it since. But it's sitting up there, and I still it's waiting. I still look it's at waiting. it longingly. It's waiting for another moment of glory. Well, just it's just it's like <laughs> it's a, it's a cherished memory. It's like a childhood photo or something. Or yeah. Whatever, but it's just it's just it's a thing. Of never going to go. And I don't know how many times I'll ever play this copy, but it's never going to go. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, that's just how these games are. They're magical. Number two. <laughs> our number two is definitely both of our, one of our favorite games, period. And that is Twilight Imperium 4. Originally Twilight Imperium 3, slight upgrade, we'll keep the 4. But see, the thing is, once Twilight Imperium 5 comes out, then this one's getting just whoosh, no. Then, just then, well, then but this it's, is invalid. And no, it's invalid. No. Oh man, no, this is valid because it's still the same game. People, <laughs> it's I don't care. It's just a little streamlined. Nitpickers can argue all you want. <laughs> it's the same game to me. All right, so this game is 4x massive, eight plus hour game of greatness. It is amazing if you like space games and you want to get the full experience. Um, we have big ginormous galaxy. You're starting on opposite ends of it. You're all flying together. You're passing laws, galactic laws, mind you, taking over planets, building war suns. They're ginormous. They're like big plastic balls. They're amazing looking. All these really fun things. There's all this stuff going on. Plus, every single time we've played this, there's always been a carry on overarching epic story that keeps coming back. Hey, you remember that time? <laughs> Every single game has a remember that time. Probably my most cherished one is one of the more recent ones. I can oh, already tell get, by the oh, look you on get, your you face. You get to tell this story, huh? Because, yes, I get to tell the story because I got the I want to hear it from your perspective. Oh, it was great. So, uh, Hunter loves to betray me in games. As he no, likes to say, not. he'll say, I don't do co-op. It's very, yeah, look at that. That is not the face of innocence, people. So, as we're playing, inevitably, he'll say something like, hey, do you mind if I just pass through your area? I'll give you some goods, make it kind of nice for you. I promise I'm just passing through, blah, blah, blah. And eventually I wear down. I'm like, oh, sure. All of a sudden I'm attacked. Big shock, right? And then, of course, oh. why, why am I betrayed? No, and not always. Just often enough to throw me off, okay? So this happens. So finally, my time like has come. This story is completely different than my life. Is it? Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I don't think we have time for your version, though. I'm so <laughs> sorry. So... I am finally in a good position, and he's done this many a time, so I did it back. He's never been betrayed by me before. The picture, I should have had a camera ready because the look on his face was so priceless. It, it, was, it was hilarious. And everyone at the table just started roaring because you were like, you betrayed me. You betrayed Oh, it was magical. So now this is the epic game of, of when I betrayed him. And now he's like, the trust, the love is gone. I mean, it was just amazing. I, don't trust you I, in, I haven't trusted you in a game since. So that was like three years ago. <laughs> I mean, it was great. So every time I'm want, just every saying. Time you ask, why, why don't you work with me? The one time. As opposed to the how many dozens of betrayals. But you're six hours oh, into man. a game and you just get so betrayed. It just rips your little heart out. Your poor was, little innocent actually, heart. Actually, deep down, deep down, like way, way deep You were really down, proud of me, weren't I you? I was very proud. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Let's wonderful. move on to our number one, because we can say our now. Our number one is Star Trek Fleet, Fleet Captains. Captains. So this would have made the list in the original version of the game. So we, we've had this game for many, many, many years. We've yes. played it many, many times. Yes. It's Love been it. top to the top of our favorite games of all time since we first played it. Yep. Um, so it would have made the list regardless. But recently, well, I guess it was not very recently, maybe two, what, two years ago? I don't count last year, so Three yeah. Three years ago? It was I like don't know. a year ago. Fairly <laughs> recently, a, a, a viewer of our, our family showdown channel, uh, met up with me at our local game store to play a game. We played Dune, uh, the original Dune. Um, we played that, had a blast, had a great time. And uh, as we were leaving, he said, hey, come over, come over to my car. And I'm like, I don't know this guy very well. <laughs> I haven't heard this version of the story. Like, so I go over and he pops open his trunk and then there is a, a, is a four Star Trek fleet captain game. I'm like, I already have this. You, you have to know I already have this game. He's like, no, no, no. He opened it up, and they're all painted. <laughs> oh, and they're all, so beautiful. The, the main game oh. and all the expansions fully painted. Like, And I'm like, you're, you're kidding, right? Yeah. You're kidding, right? He's like, no, no, no. We're, we're, we don't hardly play it, and we know you guys love it. And 
he gave it to us, and oh my gosh, we played it. And it's, uh, it's Paul just, rocks. It's just blew, up Paul. blew us away. And, yeah. Uh, it's one of our most cherished possessions. Oh my gosh, I love getting that thing out to play now. Because, yeah. I mean, we had fun with it before, like you said, but this. Yeah, it's, 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 like it's a pretty amazing out the uh, thing on so many levels, but uh, we love the game. We love that version of the game. Um, so I guess we kind of will eventually call it the original version. Yeah, because <laughs> we have this beautiful We have both right sets up on our shelf, up on our shelf, and uh, yeah, you're right. When we put it out, it's like when you when you it's just the wow factor you now. You get your ships, basically. You kind of drip, you got to get random ships, and you're like, oh, which ones did I get? Oh, that one's cool. And, no, this one's cool. And it's just so amazing. So it is. There you go. That is it. That is our top 10 games that we rarely play. We'll never call. But we'll never get rid of. They're chock full of purge, whatever, whatever you want, however you want to say it. That's right. All right. Well, that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out our channel, The Family Showdown, just go to YouTube, look up, just type in the typey types, The Family Showdown, and we'll pop up. We have, last count, like 130 top 10 lists. Woo! And we have live shows every Tuesday night, 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. Bye!